the Eric Frazier Show. My name is Eric Frazier, and I'm so happy to be able to share with you my thoughts and ideas uh, about a number of issues that go way beyond real estate. So this is the Eric Frazier Show, where I get to talk about just about everything, including real estate. We're going to address God, spirituality, very, very important to many of us, right? God, family, business, real estate, money, retirement, all those things that as fathers and, and mothers, as leaders, we have to think about. And that questions that many people come to us, those of us uh, are seasoned professionals, uh, to talk about. I'm also going to talk about marriage. And, you know, when you talk about family, you're going to talk about children, you're going to talk about marriage. And uh, that's, uh, you know... I think I have some years on me now to talk about raising children and also about marriage and relationships. And so the Eric Frazier Show is uh, all about life and the circumstances that we have to move in and out of or address every single day. So please share this show with your family and friends. Uh, you can watch us on Apple TV, Roku, Fire Stick, just about everywhere now on live streaming, as well as the podcast, anywhere you find your podcast, The Eric Frazier Show. I'm so excited about it. And today is episode number one on The Eric Frazier Show. We'll be right back right after this commercial break. Many Californians fear that they will not be able to pay their rent next month. Financial education and literacy are the catalyst for relief. So what resources are out there? A State of California program connects you with a HUD certified housing counselor who can assist you on your financial education journey with no cost to you. Call today at 1-800-569-4287. Again, that is 1-800-569-4287. Want to keep up with the current developments happening in the world of real estate? The Real Estate Roundtable, hosted by Eric L. Frazier, is a show you do not want to miss. The show features a panel of VIP agents who are passionate about helping people. It is what they do best. They discuss today's hot topics, latest market updates and trends. The panel also conducts interviews with prominent figures in the industry. New episode every Friday live on Facebook and replay on the Powers Now YouTube channel. And we're back. For those of you just joining us, welcome to the Eric Frazier Show. I'm so excited. My own show. The first episode of the Eric Frazier Show in 2022. And first of all, I want to wish all of you a happy new year. January is already off to a fast start. And I tell you, uh, wow, 2021 was a crazy year for me in so many ways. Uh, 2021 uh, represents kind of a threshold, if you will, uh, to a whole new life for me uh, and my beautiful bride, spouse, wife, Ruby Lee Gordon. And so I, I achieved a number of uh, milestones in uh, 2021 and will achieve a new milestone in 2022. And I want to talk about that for our first episode, and that is marriage and family. You know, I don't know about you, but uh, marriage and family is everything to me. I got married at the tender age of 19. I literally left my father's house to my house, my wife and uh, my wife and I's house. We lived in an apartment for a couple of years before we were able to buy our first home. And so uh, really having a spouse, having a partner uh, from really the beginning of adulthood, uh, I think that uh, is very, very important to me to, to kind of recognize that I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't have what I have today. I wouldn't have been able to achieve the things that I've achieved over my career in business uh, and or in real estate if it wasn't for 
my incredible wife. And so one of the milestones that uh, we achieved together in 2021 was 40 years of marriage. December 19th, uh, 2021, Ruby Lee Gordon Frazier and I have been married for 40 years. 40 years. That's a long time. Now, I know there are those out there who've been married for longer, 50, 60, 70, and longer, and we'll get there one day. But 40 years today, it's really unheard of. In fact, uh, anything in the 30s or even 20s is unheard of. I mean, it's just not happening that people are staying together. And I have been blessed uh, to have uh, a person that I've literally known all my life. And if we count uh, the years we dated, which was about two years, it's really 42 years uh, that we have known each other and have been together. And so uh, to acknowledge our 40 year marriage and her incredible partnership, I put it on the cover of the Power Is Now National Magazine. Now, uh, what's uh, important to me about that is because the power is now is also a result of Ruby. In fact, she helped me come up with the name uh, and uh, she's been a very integral part of the power is now media. You just see me, you know, doing all these interviews and shows, but you know what they say, behind every great man uh, is even a greater woman. And clearly uh, she is the real CEO behind the CEO of the power is now. So Ruby's on the cover, and inside the cover, uh, there is a brief biography about her, and I would love for you to read it and get to know her. Also, there's a poem that I wrote about our marriage, and I'm going to share that poem with you today uh, because, uh, you know, it is truly from the heart, uh, expressing really the journey we have been on now for 40 years, and it is my hope and prayer that we will see another 40 years uh, and uh, be like some of the rare couples we see out there that have been married for 70, 80 years of marriage. Now, marriage has been, you know, uh, it has had its ups and downs. I mean, and anybody who's been married for any period of time, uh, you will agree that marriage does have its ups and downs. We have your, we, you have your good times and you have your challenging times, right? And of course, uh, when you get married, you, you take that vow uh, that essentially states that you're going to stick together no matter what, right? No matter what, in the good times or the bad times, for better or for worse, for richer or poorer. And I tell you, through these 40 years, I've come to uh, learn a lot that uh, hopefully I'll be able to share with you on the Eric Frazier Show. And I've also asked my wife to join me as well on some shows as we talk about marriage and family and uh, dealing with some of the challenges that uh, you're, going to, uh, you're going to have, especially for those of you who are just getting started. You know, I have four daughters. We together have four daughters, and uh, I, we are so blessed uh, to have four incredible, highly skilled, accomplished, overachiever daughters. Uh, and I will admit that I wanted a boy. In fact, our third daughter, Erica, is named Erica because she was supposed to be a boy, uh, but I am so glad she is who she is, Erica Frazier and soon to be Erica Tomasi uh, getting married uh, here, hopefully in just uh, a couple of months. And so we have four daughters and uh, I tell you, uh, there's something unique. Uh, and I hear this from my friends who have boys about raising daughters. And I know this with 100% certainty, there's no way I could have did it without Ruby. I don't know how, uh, single mothers are able to navigate all the challenges that life brings and to do it on their own. And yet that just shows the resilience and the strength of women. And I tell you, my wife uh, did an incredible job in mentoring, developing, 
and uh, making our girls young, powerful, extraordinary women today. And that's just the beginning of her story as a mother uh, and as an entrepreneur and as a leader and as a very fashionable, highly intelligent woman doing big things in real estate and in life. So uh, what I wanna do now is to you know, share the poem uh, that I wrote. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the things that I've learned about marriage. Uh, and I lay those, uh, those things out, I, I point them out in the article uh, as I address uh, my journey with Ruby over the last 40 years. So let's start first with the poem. The name of the poem is entitled 40th Anniversary, a love life poem for Ruby Frazier on our 40th anniversary. So here's the poem. It's December 19th, 2021. After 40 years of marriage, you are still my number one. I love you. I can't believe what we have achieved together. You have stuck by me even in stormy weather supported me, helped me, loved me, forgiven me constantly, and put up with me because you love me. It seems like yesterday that I said I do, and we were standing before my father looking all brand new, two little lovebirds leaving the nest, ready to take on the world and to do our best, to create a life together forever, on a promise and a vow and wow. We have seen it all and been through it all, but we promise to have and to hold each other. From our wedding day forward, that was the desire of our heart, to be together forever and never to part. For better or for worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, until death we part, and yet we are here, still under the ark of our covenant alive and well, having endured the ups and downs, the successes and failures, I am here for you and you are here for me. We have become one and a family with four children and three grandchildren, sons-in-laws and son-in-laws to be. We have established a legacy. Our love is our legacy. No one can take that away from you or me. In spite of what the future holds, we have laid a path, we have built the mold. For generations, our story will be told. And so, I love you more today than I could ever imagine and in ways that are difficult to express. We have built a nest and our children are gone. All I have is you and all I ever wanted was you. You are second to none. I began with you and I will end with you because I am forever in love with you. You are my rock and my high place above the noise. You are my shelter when in the warm embrace of your arms. You are my sugar high, my cup of coffee, my warm tea, my sweet potato and candied yam and all things that are sweet to me. You make me love you more each day and appreciate when you say i love you happy anniversary to you and me may god bless us to see many more anniversaries and to be the very best we can be as a family that's the poem folks i wrote to celebrate 40 years uh, with this incredible gorgeous nubian queen Ruby Lee Gordon Frazier. Well, I have a little bit more to share with you. We're going to take a quick commercial break, let you uh, ponder that poem for a moment. You're listening to The Eric Frazier Show. We'll be right back. The Power Is Now magazines are the leading resource for real estate agents, mortgage bankers, entrepreneurs, and small home ownership businesses, providing leaders with business strategy information, resources, and tools through PIN, Real Estate Programming Guide magazines. Stay up to the minute with real estate news and information from industry experts. 
Subscription is free. Sign up today. ThePowersNow.com. ThePowersNow.com. And we're back. For those of you just joining us, welcome to the Eric Frazier Show. I'm so excited. I got my own show, folks. This is episode one. And uh, I'm so glad to be beginning the year, 2022, with my own show to be able to talk about life and family and business and politics and real estate and credit and just everything that, you know, we have to deal with in life. And I'm very, very happy to begin this first show talking about my wife, my partner of 40 years. Folks, she's on the cover of the magazine. Check it out, the January issue. She is a Nubian queen, no question about it. And I am so incredibly blessed to have been married to her for over 40 years. Now, I just shared a poem with you that is also in the magazine. So please check it out, share it. And I hope I did a decent job in reading it. Now, sometimes when you write poetry, you know, I, I do, I think I do a decent job writing poetry, but I'm not the best in uh, performing poetry, if you will. Uh, so uh, one of these days, in fact, my dream is to have a real poet read my poetry. That's gonna happen one day. In fact, if you're interested in reading more poetry, just go to ericfraser.com, ericfraser.com, and there you'll see a website devoted to three books of poetry, The Angel's View of Calvary, The Barber Shop, and Ice Cream. These are three books of uh, poetry that, uh, you know, I love writing poetry because it truly is just an expression of emotions and thoughts and feelings. Um, and to express those, uh, those thoughts and feelings in writing in a poetic way, well, I don't think it just gets, I don't think it gets better than that, folks. It really doesn't. So I hope you enjoyed the poem I just read about Ruby and that you'll share it with others. Now, also on page 64, I wrote about our 40 years of marriage, my wife, my life, uh, or my life, my wife, my life is my wife, 40 year journey. Uh, it's on page 64 of the magazine. And in the magazine, I address a, a question that I get asked all the time. And that is, what is the secret to a 40 year marriage, folks? And I have to tell you that uh, there really aren't any secrets. There aren't any secrets. And in fact, if someone has a book out there that says the secrets to marriage, um, uh, I probably should pick it up because if they have the secrets, I would like to know. Uh, after being married for 40 years, I can tell you right now, I do not know of any secrets to a successful marriage. Uh, the information to have a successful marriage is readily available. And in fact, not only is it readily available in hundreds if not thousands of books and marriage counselors and preachers and teachers, on relationships, but I believe that it's written on our hearts. I, be, I believe that God designed us uniquely to be in relationship with others, beginning with marriage. I mean, if you are a believer and you believe in the creation story, you know, God created, you know, Adam and then he created Eve and he uh, made them very unique uh, at the same time, perfect for each other. So I believe that God has programmed in our hearts and minds all that we need, all that we need to have to be in a loving, wonderful, fulfilling relationship. And when it's not happening, it's because uh, God also gives us free will to act up and to do things and to say things and to behave ways that we shouldn't do. I mean, we're not, we're living spiritual beings and creatures with absolute free will to do what we want to do, when we want to do it, how we want to do it. And so uh, the love that enables us to stay together, to communicate, to work out issues is really the foundation uh, to, to it all. Uh, there's no, you know, there's no, there's no, you know, 12 step rule uh, that I know of. There, there are no secrets, there are no tricks. And so 
but in an effort to provide some guidance around marriage, since I have been married for 40 years and I have been through some things, uh, I am going to share what I believe are kind of the basics to anyone who is willing to, you know, jump the broom into matrimony. And so here they are. Number one, and this is in the magazine, by the way. Number one, love your wife as much as you love yourself. And let me tell you something, if you love your wife as much as you love yourself, that's going to probably solve 99% of your problems because we love ourselves, right? We love ourselves, especially men, right? We love ourselves. We want to take care of ourselves. We want to do what makes us happy. Uh, we, we feed our ego, we feed our bodies, we, we, we're very competitive as men, uh, and, 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 and women are too in, in many respects, and so uh, we're constantly looking for ways to improve ourselves, you know, especially men, constantly looking for ways to improve ourselves, whether it be losing weight or growing hair or, or you know, getting an education, getting a degree, an advanced degree, or moving up in the workforce. And we're constantly working on ourselves. Why? Because we love ourselves. Now imagine taking all that energy and putting it also into your spouse. I, I really believe that is, if it's a secret, call it a secret if you want to, but I believe that that is uh, perhaps foundational because the, the, the common ingredient is love. Love yourself, right? You should love yourself, right? There's only one you. You only have one body. You're only one person. But you should love your wife as much as you love yourself. And by the way, that's actually biblical. Uh, read Ephesians chapter 5. Uh, for those of you who are Bible students, read Ephesians chapter 5, and you'll see what I'm talking about. We are to love our wives as much as we love ourselves, even to the point of death. And so I think that if we can achieve that kind of love for our spouse, that love of our spouse, as much as we love ourselves, uh, I think that a lot of things go away. Like, you don't argue with yourself, right? You certainly don't strike yourself. Uh, you don't disrespect yourself. You don't lie to yourself. You don't yell at yourself. You don't neglect yourself. Uh, you see where I'm going with this? There's a lot. I'm, I'm telling you right now, folks, if you could just love your spouse as much as you love yourself, it's going to solve about 99% of any problems you're having in your relationship. Number two, recognize that you are not perfect and nor is she all right so be quick to apologize and to say that i'm sorry when you are wrong and to be humble and say that i'm sorry even when you're right all right nobody likes a smart aleck and nobody likes a person that wants to to rub their face into you know in something and if they're wrong about it nobody wants somebody to be you know, arrogant and always, you know, looking for a way to kind of have the upper hand or the last word, you know, say, you see there, you're wrong, you're wrong. I was right, I'm right, you're wrong. It's a, it's a level of immaturity uh, that unfortunately rises up. I'm telling you, it's born out of the flesh, not the spirit. It truly is. Uh, again, again, we're creatures, we're free agents. Um, we have that spirit in us, the spirit of God, and we have that love he's written in our hearts, and but our flesh wrestles against all of that, and it causes that immature little child who always wants to be right uh, to pop up, and uh, this is a problem. Keep in mind that you are friends, you are partners, you are lovers, you are, you, you're in this for life. You're not competitors. You're not adversaries. Uh, you are really one. And, and that's you know, part of that whole reason why you say, hey, uh, you know, my family's now, your family, your family's now, my family, and together, 
We're going to take on life together as one. You become one. You, you, you create through coming together children who represent you as one. And so love, love. I, I tell you, it goes back to number one. When you love your spouse as much as you love yourself, it solves 99% of the problems. When you recognize that you're not perfect at all, you're not perfect, you're terribly flawed. We all are. And I think the more we recognize how flawed we are, how imperfect we are, we can have some compassion for our spouse who is also flawed and imperfect. Now, Ruby might say that um, I'm wrong there, that she is not flawed or imperfect in any way. And I probably would have to agree with her, especially compared to me, I'm terribly flawed and imperfect. And she is perfect. I mean, in fact, she does remind me of that uh, a lot of times, that how perfect she is and how uh, just blessed I am to even be in her presence and in her world. And honestly, I would have to agree. I would have to agree, seriously. I, mean, I work all the time. I mean, I'm not even going to get into me, all right? I'm not going to get into me. But the point here to say that, um, to, to acknowledge that you're not perfect, that you make mistakes, uh, and your spouse also is not perfect, and that she uh, makes mistakes uh, is important. To be humble and to be willing to say, I'm sorry, at the drop of a hat. Even if they don't want to hear it, say it anyway. And even when you're right, to be humble and to say, I'm sorry. I'm telling you, it's going to save your marriage. It will at least add a few more years. Uh, and perhaps a life of being together without uh, too much conflict. Now, don't get me wrong, you're gonna have conflicts and disagreements, but it's how you handle it. Now, the final one, and I just have three, and that is to be present. And uh, man, I have to tell you, this is a big area for me, a huge weakness to be present. It's difficult for, especially working adults, both are working, you know, you spend all your day talking to people and you get home, you're all talk, talked out, right? Or you're working on projects and at the end of the day, you're tired and you just want to zone out in front of the television or you want to do something that doesn't involve too much engagement, right? I mean, come on, let's just keep it real. We're all human beings and we feel that way, but uh, I, I'm telling you, we, we have to save some of ourselves for our spouse. We have to be able to communicate as much as possible with our spouse for the rest of our lives. And the communication can't just be limited to the bills or to finances or to addressing issues or problems or, or other people or other family members. So the communication needs to center around life and love and the two of you, us. Now, again, it's, it's easier said than done. It really is. And so what am I saying? I'm saying you just got to make the effort. Uh, that may mean for many people that you've got to either schedule it. So maybe you don't work to five, you work to four. Or if you work to five or six o'clock, you, you know, throughout the day, you conserve some energy, some time for your spouse. And then when you get home, you try to put down the phone. It's so hard to do. Oh my God, that is so hard to do. Especially in my business, forget about it, right? Well, I, I, I better forget about it if I want to have a happy life, happy wife, happy life. Let me tell you, my wife's number one pet peeve is me being on the doggone phone, and I quote, doggone phone all the time. You're constantly looking at that phone. I get, you know, FOMO, you know, fear of missing out, whether it be a text or an email or a phone call, and I want to pick it up. Folks, let me tell you something right now. Don't be me. This is an area of weakness for me. Got to put down that phone. And, you know, uh, we're just beginning the new year, 2022. So I'm going to uh, practice just leaving the phone 
after five o'clock in my office. I'm not even bringing it into the house. I'm putting it up on the charger and just being done with it and focusing on what's going on at the house, participating in dinner, participating in the conversations, watching TV together, uh, engaging everyone at the house together, if it's just you and your spouse. Now, this is so important. Communication is the key, it's the foundation to all relationships, whether it be marriage, family, business, communication is key. Now, those are my top three. And I certainly hope that uh, you'll take uh, my recommendations as just that, recommendations. I, I don't have any secrets. I don't have you know, a bulletproof strategy for a successful marriage. I believe all marriages are a work in progress until the day we die, honestly. And so the key though, I think to staying in the marriage is being quick to forgive and to forget, to make love the, the priority and uh, loving your spouse as much as you love yourself. Uh, and recognizing uh, your own imperfections. I, I think those things are, are absolutely critical. Now, I, I love my wife uh, more than I can actually put into words. And uh, I really do. Uh, my poetry uh, falls short, seriously. Uh, even the article that I wrote about her doesn't cover really everything about her and what makes her so wonderful. Um, I could tell you this though, she would rather not that I, you know, do this, do this show, you know, and devote it to her or write poems about her. And in fact, you look at my books of poetry, you'll see several poems there about her. She'd rather not I do any of those things. Uh, what she would rather prefer is for me to pay attention when she's speaking to me. She would rather that I mop the kitchen floor or match, cook dinner sometime. Uh, and instead of always depending on her to cook dinner or to keep the house clean, she would rather that I just be engaged uh, uh, and, 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 you know, in the couch, on the couch, sitting together and not looking at my phone, but looking at her and being more interactive. Uh, she would rather we take longer walks on the weekend or walk more frequently and have real conversation than anything else that I could write or do. At the end of the day, all she would really want from me is just my time. And it just seems totally unreasonable that I would not provide her that. Well, folks, that's... Uh, that's the show. That's our first episode on the Eric Frazier Show. Uh, I, again, I, I want to thank you for watching. And for those of you who are listening on the podcast, for listening, please share the video, share the podcast. Also, I just want to thank uh, my wife again for 40 years of, uh, of support uh, and marriage and love for the four awesome daughters that we have. Uh, the incredible grandchildren that we have. Oh my God, they're fabulous kids, all highly intelligent and gonna do big things in life, just like uh, my daughters. And so we are truly blessed. And um, I certainly hope that you're blessed as well in your relationship. And I hope that the Eric Frazier Show can be a resource for you as we talk about marriage and family and business and life and real estate and financial matters. We're going to cover it all on the Eric Frazier Show. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. See you soon right here on the Eric Frazier Show. The Power Is Now Media is worldwide with growing audience of future home buyers, investors, builders, developers, real estate agents, and brokers. The Power Is Now Media is well positioned to increase awareness and produce results for our growing roster of advertising partners. 
An advertisement on any of our platforms is the right step toward reaching and communicating key brand messages to a targeted network of individuals, families, and communities interested in housing. Our content areas include feature stories and profiles on successful real estate agents, business owners, government, and community leaders. The Power Is Now magazines are the leading resource for real estate agents, mortgage bankers, entrepreneurs, and small home ownership businesses, providing leaders with business strategy information, resources, and tools through PIN, real estate, and programming guide magazines. Stay up to the minute with real estate and mortgage news and information from industry experts. VIP agents are able to feature listings each week. The Power Is Now TV radio podcast features weekly shows that include Homebuyers Town Hall, Real Estate Roundtable, VIP Agent Spotlight, and so much more. Each week, VIP agents have opportunities to be featured guests on the shows. VIP agents can discuss and showcase houses, neighborhoods, and provide brief introductions. The interviews are unlimited 10 to 15 minutes on each current listing. This product alone separates you from your competition. The Power Is Now delivers to you market update interview to promote listing weekly, promotional biographical video, co-host a bi-monthly homebuyers town hall show, featured subject matter expert on real estate roundtable show, The Power Is Now program guide e-magazine, The Power Is Now national e-magazine, article writing and blogging, social media content customization, inclusion and press releases, graphic design services, business and performance coaching, technology support, referrals, lead generation opportunities, and management support.